Hello. Hello, hello, hello. I hope somebody can hear me. <clears throat> Pardon my very scratchy, croaky voice, but I hope you guys are doing well. If you're watching live or watching on the replay, you're very much welcome. I'm Dr. Sylvia, and this is Ask Away Health. I hope you're having a good break and um, very happy Easter, happy Resurrection Sunday for those of us who are celebrating Easter. I wanted to jump on quickly for this live session. This is quite impromptu, but I came across this article that I, I wanted us to talk about. So this is probably not going to be too long. And I remember that this is Endometriosis Awareness Month and it's running out Tomorrow is um, 31st, isn't it, of March? So um, the whole of this month, I've been sharing posts and sharing videos on the channel relating to endometriosis. You guys have been responding to our community quizzes around endometriosis, and I've just been trying to raise awareness, talk about symptoms and so on. And when I came across this story, I felt, gosh, this is a good opportunity to emphasize what we're trying to talk about the challenges that women are having with endometriosis. So I just came across this um, article, this post from the Metro this evening. And um, oh, let me say hi to you guys. Hi, everyone. <laughs> if you're just joining. Hi there. I'm Dr. Sylvia. Where are you watching from? I hope you're doing OK. Thank you so much for joining in. We're just going to have a brief discussion around endometriosis awareness and wrap things up. But I am, um, yes, I was just saying I came across this article on the Metro tonight. And let me quickly read through it and then just make a couple of points about um, what I've observed and maybe what we can do as patients and as clinicians to help ourselves to improve the diagnosis of, or to reduce the delay in getting diagnosis with endometriosis and similar conditions, chronic conditions. So this lady is Anita Guru. And it took three, almost three years to uncover the cause of her pain is the title. So she was diagnosed with endometriosis when she was 33. And apparently she was struggling to get pregnant alongside experiencing regular discomfort in her pelvis, a twisting, burning pain in her abdomen and intensely painful periods. Those were her predominant symptoms or primary symptoms. It took her almost three years to uncover what was causing her pain and she was only diagnosed when doctors agreed to proceed with laparoscopic surgery as a last resort to decipher whether there was something in her digestive system that was causing the problem. Afterwards, her doctor discovered that she had stage four endometriosis, stage four, so that's severe, severe endometriosis. It was so severe that she needed surgery. When I had the first operation, they hadn't prepared for the severity and couldn't, couldn't remove it all as the doctor wasn't experienced in the particular type of procedure that was required. Um, let's go to the bottom. So she says, so I was transferred to another specialist doctor and from memory had to give my body time to recover before having another invasive operation as it took me two to three weeks to be feeling a lot better. Anita now 42 tells metro.co.uk. Guys, I hope you can hear me because I just noticed this video is playing and it doesn't have any sound. Please let me know if you can hear me or just hang on, let me do a sound check. Um, I've just been muttering away to myself, haven't I? Bear with me a second. Let me see what the sound. Oh, here we go. The sound's fine. Okay. So, um, if you're watching this, please give this video a like. I would really appreciate that. I would love to hear from yourself. If you have any experience around endometriosis or its diagnosis, that would be great. Or let me know where you're watching from. Um, but yeah, give the video a like if you're watching live and, of course, on the replay. So where was I? So she was just telling us that um, the doctor wasn't experienced. Okay. So she says, I am, so I was transferred to another specialist doctor and for memory had to give my body time to recover before having another invasive operation as it took me two to three weeks to be feeling a lot better. Anita now 42 tells metro.co.uk. Around seven months later, she had her third operation followed by a fourth eight months later. Oh goodness. I also had to undergo IVF as I was told that was the cause of infertility. Of, uh, that's stage four, severe stage of course. 
Emotionally, she felt in limbo for years. I didn't know what was wrong and if it was impacting my fertility. Anita, who is a coach and motivational speaker, adds, I felt anxious that it could be something serious as my mom had passed away from ovarian cancer a few years prior. And so I was scared that I could be at risk. I had to carry on with life work and I tried to do things to stay well. Oh, here's a lovely picture of her. <laughs> this is after her um, experience. Um, and so this is Endometriosis UK, the charity, revealed that the waiting times for a diagnosis for endometriosis have deteriorated in the last three years, skyrocketing up to an average of eight years, 10 months, my God, eight years and 10 months. In 2020, the figure was eight years. So we're actually taking it back a step backwards. It was better in 2020 to diagnose a woman with endometriosis. This is bad. The study found that almost half of all respondents has, had visited their GP 10 or more times, oh gosh, with symptoms prior to their diagnosis, while 70% had visited five times or more. So a majority of women would have seen their doctor five times, at least five times, with symptoms suggesting endometriosis. I mean, I would also like to talk a little bit about why it can be tricky when you first hear the, uh, the symptoms of endometriosis. It can be difficult to actually put it in a box because when you're sitting in front of the doctor, your, your symptoms may not immediately suggest endometriosis. But I, I think given the fact that it is one of the most um, one of the more common chronic causes of chronic pelvic pain in women, it really should be something that we're thinking about fairly, fairly early on in the journey. So when a woman comes the first time with the pain, you may not immediately put it down unless the symptoms are so classic, you may not immediately put it down to endometriosis. But by the time she's come a second time and she's having the pain of such a nature, such severity that it affects her work and so on then that's really when the doctor needs to be saying, we need to get, we need to be doing tests, we need to be referring you to gynecology and so on. Then she goes, uh, they go on to say, what's more, 78% of those who later went on to receive a diagnosis of endometriosis had experienced one or more doctor accusing them of making a fuss about nothing. See, that kind of behavior, that needs to have gone out with the last century, you know? making a fuss about nothing that really that really needs to go out with that that really needs to be something that we talked about in the past not in 2024 and many felt that the severity of their symptoms was questioned by healthcare practitioners so you can never take away from an individual the nature or intensity of their experience you just can't you know privately you may feel something in your head but you just can't because you don't know you just don't know it goes on to say 1.5 million people across the UK are impacted by endometriosis with symptoms including pelvic pain, period pain that can interfere with daily life, pain during or after sex, and pain when going to the toilet during a period. So why is it getting harder to get an endometriosis diagnosis in the UK? As Endometriosis UK tells Metro.co.uk, the reasoning is layered. Firstly, the pandemic significantly impacted the NHS and its available resources, though gynecology waiting times increased by the highest percentage of any specialty. Elsewhere, there is uh, issue with awareness, as the survey results show a demonstrable lack of awareness of endometriosis and its symptoms by healthcare practitioners, along with a lack of understanding or sometimes belief in its impact. That's a really big factor. And likewise, many are still unaware of the main symptoms of endometriosis. As a result, people might be unlikely to suspect that they have the condition or push for a diagnosis as there's a societal and cultural dismissal of period pain as normal. That's where I'm going to. That's why the topic of this live stream even if we just have a 10 minute conversation, that's why the topic of this stream is, ladies, please let us stop enduring um, pelvic pain or abnormal or irregular bleeding. Let's not, let's stop accepting it as normal. Last, was it last week we we're talking about this um, um, YouTube and Instagram influencer, the late Jessica Petway, who um, was diagnosed with fibroids for several months before 
somebody eventually had a look and performed the vaginal exam and this and she was then referred to oncology and they discovered she has cervical cancer but at the beginning of her experience i think at the when she first started having heavy bleeding symptoms she asked around and people said oh yeah we, so that's that's normal or she the impression i got from that her write up was when she asked maybe her friends or people that she was close to and said oh i'm having quite heavy bleeding what do you think it seemed normal so perhaps she didn't go as early and i'm not blaming her not at all I'm just saying that our collective knowledge and understanding or, and what we've accepted as normal, perhaps we need to start changing it. We need to start checking it and saying to ourselves that, no, it is not normal to accept heavy menstrual bleeding, losing floods of blood, gushing when you're on your period. That's not normal. Painful periods that you cannot lift yourself off the floor <coughs> or, excuse me, or that affects your ability to perform your normal work or makes you, you know, you're out for a period of time. You're out, you're unwell because of very heavy or painful periods or experiencing pelvic pain. You're taking paracetamol or acetaminophen. You're taking Tylenol. You're taking um, Nurofen. You're using hot water bottles. You're doing everything to dull the pain and just getting on with it. No, we need to stop that. So not trying to bl um, blame the patient no but trying to say that we need to have that mindset of not accepting something that is abnormal because everybody else seems to be accepting it that's the point i'm trying to make so um it says empowering patients with knowledge about their condition enables them to advocate for themselves yes seek proper care and access and access a support network this is Valentina Milanova, women's health expert and founder of leading gynecological health company, Tells Metro. Raising awareness about endometriosis is instrumental in reducing diagnostic delays, improving treatment outcomes, and enhancing the quality of life for those affected by this condition. Patients will need to know about associated conditions that they might need to manage like chronic pelvic pain and infertility. So Anita believes that awareness is increasing, but that the condition needs to be taken more seriously, especially by those who have the power to make decisions about funding and investment in research. And she says, for any woman struggling or any women struggling to get a diagnosis, please do continue to speak to your GP, demand referrals. If you can access private treatment through things like medical insurance, please do advocate for yourself and your health, Anita suggests. When trying to get a diagnosis or when you get one, it can have a real impact on your mental health and it can lead to limiting negative self-beliefs. Remember you are dealing with a debilitating disease. Be kind to yourself. You would never choose to have it and it can be life-limiting, but reach out and get support for your mental health too. I could not have said it better. So that's Anita. <clears throat> that's Anita. So guys, if you're watching and have some experience of this, let me know what you guys think. What do you guys think? What else can women do? Because eight years, right? Eight years is a heck of a long time to be sitting with a diagnosis or sitting with a medical condition that when it's eventually diagnosed, it's at its severe stage, very severe stage. You end up needing to have surgery to treat it. And then at that stage, it's also significantly impacted your fertility such that you need to have IVF. Let me know what you guys think, okay? Let me know what you guys think. The bottom line, like I said, is raising advocacy. We know about endometriosis. In fact, we're told that endometriosis is... Um, affects, like in the UK, um, affects one in 10. Yeah, it's one of the most common gynecological disorders in women of reproductive age. Let me say that again. Endometriosis is one of the most common gynecological disorders in women of reproductive age. And for those who are wondering what is endometriosis, so this is when <clears throat> tissue that is normally found within the inner lining of the womb starts to grow outside of it, 
okay? That's, a, that's an abnormal sex situation. And it can develop. So instead of in, in, within the inner lining of the womb where, you know, from where menstrual blood comes, instead of being located within the womb, it can be located in other parts of the body. For example, the pelvis outside the womb. It can happen on the ovaries. It can happen on the bowel. It can happen on the tissues that cover the bowel. It can happen in the spaces in between the um, the the womb and the you know the the bowel or the rectum. So it can, depending on where it's located, it can cause a lot of problems. Um, and some of the symptoms that can happen are related to where the the, the, those tissues, these abnormal tissues are, are, are located. Okay. So some of the symptoms are things like pelvic pain that is that's persistent. It's not going away, going on and on. It, it might happen with the period, but it's more severe than usual period cramps. We know that period cramps can happen, but period cramps should not be enough that if you have something for pain, it's, it doesn't take the pain away. That's severe. If you, your daughter, your sister, some lady that you know is having period cramps, you take some paracetamol or naproxen and the pain doesn't go away. You have to go and lie down in bed. You can't go to school or you can't go for work. You can't do anything. That's severe pain. Let's not normalize that. That We need to work out what's causing the problem. Until we've done the tests, until we've worked out that, okay, this is because that, that there is no structural abnormality, we should not accept that as normal. We shouldn't accept that as normal. My concern is that part of the problem is many of us accept it as this is what other women go through. Maybe my mom went through it, my sisters have gone through it. It must be mm, no big deal. And we sort of carry on, carry on with it until a point where it begins to affect other things. Maybe it, it's left until you're trying to have children and then it's difficult getting pregnant. Then you decide to go and look into why this pain, I've always had it. And again, not blaming anybody, but just saying that we need to raise the awareness. So one of the symptoms for endometriosis is chronic pelvic pain. And that can be pain that, you know, you might have experienced for several months, perhaps three to six months or more. Another symptom is period pain that is so severe, it's preventing you from doing things normally. Because believe me, there are girls who have their period and they don't experience much pain. There are people who have their periods, they have a little bit of cramps the first day, and then it settles down, they get up and they do the other things. Other symptoms, having pain, either during, that is with or after sexual intercourse, or pain that's related to the bowels, the stomach, going to the toilet, especially during the period, going to the toilet, and it's really painful when you go to the toilet. Those will make us suspect could endometriosis be going on or when you're going to pass urine. So those are some of the symptoms that a woman with endometriosis might have. If you feel, if you're having these type of symptoms, if you're worried, if you're just concerned about it, please come and speak to your doctor. Please make a list of your symptoms. Please make a diary of your symptoms. Please write each time that you've been to the doctor because by the time you've been twice or thrice to see the doctor about this pain and you're getting somebody fobbing you off, not really paying attention to you, then please get a second opinion. That's what it means by, advo by advocating for yourself. It means not accepting the doctor's decision as the final decision because it isn't really. It isn't. We're providing an opinion and if that opinion doesn't tally with what you feel, you can get a second opinion. But when you're getting your opinions, make sure that you have, it, it's, it's really important to be making careful note of your experiences. That's why I really emphasize keeping a diary so that you, you understand how often is this pain coming? When is this pain worse? When does it happen? It happens around my period. It happens after I've eaten. It happens when I go to the toilet. Because that's the, one of the quicker ways that you can actually get to the bottom of things when you have that kind of record. I really encourage it if you can. So please, let us be our own 
advocate our own keepers. This Endometriosis Awareness Month, it's ending tomorrow, yes, but of course, we continue to advocate over the next few weeks, months, whatever. Be aware of your symptoms. Be aware that if you go to meet your clinician, your doctor or nurse, and you've been giving painkillers the first time, it's not gotten better. You've been giving something else. The second time it happens, or even you've gone to a &E, for example, and it's still not getting better. Have a discussion. I've had this pain for X, Y amount of time. I've been to see the doctor three times, or I've even been to a &E four times, and it's still not going away. I would like a, a referral for a scan or a referral for, to gynecology because I'm worried of what might be causing the pain. Endometriosis is not cancer, but it can have such severe impact on one's well-being. This lady talked about mental health. Of course, the whole business of trying to get to the bottom, we've not even talked about the distress that the pain is causing. So how does she function as a person? How does she function at work? How does she function with her partner, with her relationship when she's always in pain? She can't be, she can't be at her optimum. Of course, it's going to, that's a chronic painful condition that's certainly going to affect your mental health. So it's, it's really important for us. And there, there are, I know that we are doing a lot more in terms of raising awareness amongst healthcare workers about um, endometriosis, listening to women, listening to the concerns, listening not just to the symptoms, but also to the impact on our health. That's really important. But I also want um, our women to be showing up to the doctor with, you know, this is what I'm going through. This is how it's affecting me. Um, and what can we do about it? How can we work together to get me better? And I really want to, I, I really want it to come to an end where you're saying you've come to the doctor three or four or five times for the same problem and we haven't moved forward. That's not, that's not fair. That's not good enough. That's really not good enough. So I hope there's somebody that will um, hear this video or hear this, I don't know what to call it, this Easter advocacy, let me use that term, to say, please don't endure abnormal menstrual bleeding. Don't endure it. If it's severe enough to affect your daily activity, if it's severe enough that you're flooding through your clothing, staining, um, staining the furniture, you know, very heavy bleeding, painful episodes, pelvic pain, different symptoms. Please just keep making a note of them. You go to see the doctor the first time, you feel they're not listening to you. Please, you can get a second opinion. You can change GPs. Like this lady said, if it's not possible to get a private medical care by insurance or whatever, is it possible to change your practitioner? You might want to start with seeing a different person at the surgery. If you're not getting anywhere there, then perhaps a different surgery altogether. But at the same time, you're making a note of when you're presenting, when your symptoms started, what you notice about the symptoms, the pattern, and you're being, you're pushing and saying, you know, we need to get to the bottom of this and not accepting what somebody says. Oh, I think, you know, let's just try this. Let's have some paracetamol. Let's do that. Um, or accepting a diagnosis of irritable, irritable bowel syndrome, for example, and not really having any tests, especially if the pain doesn't get better or it's getting worse. Let's not leave it so long. Well, that's all I have to say on the subject. I hope somebody finds this helpful. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. Please give this video a like as you um, pop out. And yeah, and share this message as well. Let's let's be advocates for ourselves, for our friends, for our families, for our daughters. Let's encourage each other to get something checked out. And um, let's let's hopefully we can reduce these diagnostic delays. Eight years? Crikey. Ah, no, that's not good. That's not good at all. Well, I hope you guys stay well. Um, enjoy the rest of the Easter break. And I will see you again soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.